another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me in the G-Spot today, I have Jamie Lee Ruiz. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> Jamie is a life coach and professional dancer. And she is going to talk with us about, drum roll please, relationships and finance, how they mirror, how they parallel, what's your relationship with money, okay? <laughs> so to warm you up, I always ask my guests a spice breaker, mm -hmm. which is when did you first fall in love with yourself? Oof. Okay. I know the exact moment. So you know I, the exact moment? I know. Oh, I love when people yeah. know the moment. I have been healing for many years now, like 10 years, I, I could say. Um, but it wasn't until the pandemic happened mm -hmm. where I was forced to sit with myself and my thoughts and my feelings. Yeah. And so much came to the surface for me. And I was confronted with a lot of really uncomfortable truths about myself that I, I guess, like could escape mm -hmm. in the everyday life. But during the pandemic, I had no choice but to just be with it and sit with it. And these uncomfortable truths were really uncomfortable. Like I didn't I. I thought I was ugly I didn't think oh. that like any man would ever want to love me or be with me all, all these really uncomfortable things um and I love to say that I like put myself through a self-love boot camp during like the first four months of the pandemic where I was like we're gonna sit with this we're gonna learn to love it we're gonna learn to love ourselves mm -hmm. and I did a lot of mirror work um and I learned how to love myself in that time what do you think made it come to the surface what was it about because you said it was during the pandemic mm -hmm. what do you think was brought to the light that maybe you were avoiding before well I think that my lifestyle before was so on the go mm -hmm. I was a professional dancer I was always on tour with an artist in another country and another city like on stage to the airport to a show to you know when I was home in LA I was probably in my apartment like a total of 20 days throughout the year, yeah. you know? And when I was home, I was sleeping. I was catching up on rest. And as much as I was, like, doing the inner work, it wasn't enough of, like, presence and mm. stillness to actually do it. Yeah. And the pandemic just <laughs> forced me <laughs> to sit with the things that I wasn't necessarily avoiding but wasn't giving myself the opportunity, the time, and the space to actually allow to be revealed to me. So it was the stillness of that time and why do you think like then was the time out of curiosity why is it like okay I need to finally address this what was gonna what's gonna happen if you didn't address it why why was that the time it wasn't even like okay this is the time I'm gonna do this it was like like somebody threw a brick at my head and mm -hmm. I was like oh I guess I need to look at this freaking brick that just got thrown at my head you know mm -hmm. like it just literally hit me like a brick wall and I just could not avoid it. Did someone ignite it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want that. Okay, give me that tea. Was it a guy? Was it a girl? Was it a family member? Like what? Oh, here we go. Yes, I want the tea. Uh -uh, you're not gonna come on the spicy life and not get spicy with us, okay? I'm like, all right, let me get comfortable. So, um, it was a guy for sure. And I, it was a guy who I had been keeping my eye on mm. over social media and I'm not one to slide in the DMs but I just was feeling brave and I'm like I have to yeah <laughs> this guy is so fine <laughs> and I slid in his DMs and we kind of like kept in touch a little bit here and there but we were never in the same city and I was in Miami at the time um dancing for JLo at the Super Bowl so I was Shout out to J-Lo. She was just doing a little dancing for J-Lo. Nothing, little, nothing, not, nothing much. Just a little dancing no for J-Lo. <laughs> we love J-Lo over here, okay? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, and so I was th there for a good amount of time. And he came in town to Miami, I guess, for like a night or two and randomly messaged me and was like, are you in Miami? Like, I'm free this night. Let's hang out. And I hung out with him. And I had how do I even explain this? Like all my insecurities came to the surface mm -hmm. that night. Also like ignited by alcohol. I had way too much to drink and I was like nervous. Cut to the next day I woke up feeling so terrible about myself. And plus then he ghosted me. So y'all hooked up. We hooked up. Okay. So you've slid into someone's DM, mm -hmm. your dream guy. Mm -hmm. You finally get him. He comes and hangs out with you. Mm -hmm. You guys hook up, but now you woke up with like, 
what? What was the emotion? Shame, okay. embarrassment, regret, insecure AF. And can I curse on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, insecure as fuck. <laughs> and I was like, it just, it just brought so much to the surface, especially like I had been, I thought, loving myself and I had been feeling confident previous to that, just like in life in general. Like mm -hmm. I said, I'd been doing the inner work. And this made me realize that I was not confident. Mm. <laughs> I did not love myself. Mm. And I acted out of all of my insecurities that mm. night, um, which led to just, it was like a shame hangover for like wow. weeks, months. And all of those, plus he ghosted me. So like, you know. A shame <laughs> hangover. Okay, you just coined that. Because I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think I've heard of the shame hangover before. But that is like a real thing that I think all of us thing. women at some point probably experience because we've all done a little something, something that we're like, oh, I'm not just going, I'm not going to count that number <laughs> on my hand. <laughs> but you had to have this experience in order to get to. to this healing process. I had to. Yeah. It was like the universe said, we're going to bring every single insecurity out in this moment in front of the one person you probably like admire the most or like. You know, like you're like you said, like mm -hmm. your dream man and you're going to feel embarrassed and you're going to feel shameful and you're going to feel terrible and awful. And it's going to force you to learn how to love yourself. Um, and that's what it was. Question. What was the story that you told yourself when you weren't hearing from him or after he ghosted you? What was the story you told yourself? Um, He's not calling me because what? Because I embarrassed myself last night. I, you know when you like try to act cocky and confident, mm -hmm. but it's just a mask for your insecurity. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you're like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why did I overshare like that? Um, so I was, the story I told myself was, um, see, he was too good for you. See, you're not good enough to be with a man like that. Mm. You're not pretty enough to be in, with a man like that. Um, just all of that. And what's the story you tell yourself now? Ooh, honey, I am a high value woman. And if anyone can't see that I am a high value woman, then they're not for me. Yes. Yes. Okay. And let me put this little like message out there as well, because one, I, I applaud you and commend you for going after what you want. You slid through someone's DM, right? I'm a huge proponent of like closed mouths don't get fed. Mm -hmm. So I'm always encouraging women that there is power within going after what you want and it doesn't have to be overly aggressive it doesn't have to be super extremely masculine you can still be feminine mm -hmm. by sending signals messages which is why i love bumble because it allows women to make the first move give that energy letting a guy know you know what i see you mm -hmm. you see me back and then you let them lead from there mm -hmm. but you did something that i think a lot of women are afraid to do which is like express to someone that mm -hmm. i'm interested mm -hmm. because they think one they're either gonna get rejected mm -hmm. or uh two that he's not gonna really want them there's all these things that we tell ourselves yeah. about expressing to someone how you feel and so you took a risk right and it may not have been the outcome that long term you wanted, mm -hmm. but what you did was you started to build that muscle of like, totally. I can get what I want. And sometimes I can get what I want and then realize it's not actually really for me. Mm -hmm. What I want isn't necessarily the healthiest thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful that God released you from <laughs> this person because clearly he wasn't ready for you either. Right. Totally. So it was kind of like a blessing that we didn't hear from him. You have to look at it yeah. like that as well. No, I say all the time and I actually use this story a lot when I like teach in my online courses and I teach about self-love. I'm like, he was a mirror for me and I needed that moment and I needed that situation and I this man changed my life. And yeah. I only hung out with him one time. Yep. Yay. And are we dating right now? We're dating. Yes. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. you guys, I like it when you slide through my DM. Let me know that you're interested in her or go straight to her DM. Okay. Um, but if you're nervous to go straight to her DM, <laughs> you guys can always let me. I will play uh, the, the matchmaker like Middle I man. always do. Yes. Middleman. Um, Because uh, our girl Kansas already told me, she was like, set her up. I was like, <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> but that's why I met you through Candice. And yes. you were actually teaching, um, I think... It was like a Reiki I was doing spiritual a Reiki meditation yes. class. What was it? Yeah, I was t uh, leading a Reiki circle for Candace's event. Yeah. Yeah, where um, I kind of do like Reiki and guided meditation mixed mm -hmm. together. I was like leading you guys through a guided meditation. It was but, uh, beautiful. At the same time, I was like uh, performing Reiki healing. Yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. And I felt good afterwards. I was like, okay, I need to like stay friends with this girl <laughs> and bring her on the show. Yes. Um, but fast forward, you posted 
a post that caught my attention where you compared um, money to relationship. And I was like, ooh, let's explore this some more. Yeah. So I'm going to read everybody like what the post is and then start asking you questions about this, okay? Yep. So let me tell you what Jamie's post was. It says, the way you feel in romantic relationships is probably how you feel about money. Then she goes on to let me explain. Mm -hmm. If you have a fear of your partner leaving you, you probably also have a fear of money running out. If you have trust issues with partners, you probably have trust issues with money. Like, where are you, money? And why aren't you here with me in my bank account? If you feel like good partners are hard to come by, so you stay in a relationship longer than you should because who knows if you'll ever find anyone as good, then you probably feel like money is hard to come by and so you hoard it. If you feel unworthy in relationships, you probably feel unworthy with money, so you subconsciously find a way to spend it all. You are in a relationship with money whether you know it or not. Learn to be intentional in the relationship. Be a good partner. Treat money good. Heal your money wounds. Work through your money blocks. Mm -hmm. Learn to create a safe and loving relationship with money. <sighs> okay, so this was multiple, like, you know, the little swipey five post thing that she did. Uh, but I do believe in, like, power of manifestation and in doing the healing work around um, your relationship with money, mm -hmm. which I actually had to do my own self. So what the message brought up, though, about comparing it to relationship, I wanted to hear more about your perspective on this. Why do you think that those two things parallel money and relationship? Well, like I said in the post, mm -hmm. you're in a relationship with money, whether you realize it or not. Like you're in relationship in a relationship with everything. Like everything is relational, mm -hmm. right? And so as I I've been doing like my money healing for a long time and I've also been doing my healing and relationships and men for a very long time and I came to a place where I looked at myself and I was like you're literally healing the same exact thing in both mm -hmm. areas of your life and you're looking for the same thing in both areas of your life and you have the same traumas and triggers mm -hmm. and wounds it's literally the same um and I realized that like money is a relationship and I have to be a good partner yeah. if I want my partner, aka money, to treat me with love, respect, safety, consistency, mm. all, all of those things. So it's in your opinion of, or in your theory, it's a, a partnership mm -hmm. where money has an identity, money has um, a meaning. Mm -hmm. And so if you want money to be, like you said, that good partner, you have to show up for money in a healthy way as well. Totally. What does that look like? So in your mind, how would you show up for money in a healthy way? Well, Number one, I think the way I talk to money or about money or even think about money in my mind, like so many times I've found myself being like, ugh, like there's never enough. You're like, basically I'm telling money, like you're not here. Mm. You're not here for me. Um, you suck. I wish you were here more. Um, I wish you did more for me. I wish you showed up more, right? I'm like <laughs> literally like being a naggy ass girlfriend to money, <laughs> right? Like where am I affirming it? You know, where am I being like a loving nurturing girlfriend yeah. I'm not I'm not you're and not speaking okay so we're not speaking positively about money and to money like yeah. we're angry with money and resentful towards yes, money okay exactly and if I'm speaking this way to money money is looking at me going like bitch you don't like me you don't respect me yeah. you don't appreciate me what am I gonna be here for right this is the toxic relationship I'm out mm. and then I'm but I'm chasing it but I want it and I want it to be here but I'm not saying I'm not I'm not nurturing it I'm not um I'm not honoring it and respecting it and I'm just I'm not but I want it probably here. even in the way that you handled it because one of the posts said um you're like maybe spending an abundance of it or like the, some form of sabotage how would that be oh, like the overspending part is what managing it in a responsible way and taking advantage of it yeah totally I think that like for a long time I in my mind was like I'm just gonna spend 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 spend, spend and like it's still going to be there for me, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the same way in a relationship with a romantic partner. You might be like, I'm just going to use you, use you, use you, and use you for all the things that I need you for, and you're still always going to be there for me, right? But I'm not going to nurture you in return or honor you or respect you in return. I'm just going to use you for all the things you can do for me. So I like this theory because the nurturing part, right? You mm -hmm. just spoke to like um, the way of being and the treatment of money Whereas like most people, and I think a lot of the rhetoric out there is, um, you know, these, this abundance mindset means get whatever you want. It'll come back to you if you tell yourself that a hundred times. And 
no, the truth of the matter is, is if you want it to be good to you, you have to be good to it as well. Mm-hmm. And what good looks like mm-hmm. is healthy habits, appreciation. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't, like you said, in relationship, be frivolous with someone that you respected and cared for. So it sounds like we have to have a loving relationship with money. Totally. And I, and just to piggyback off what you were saying about abundance, I think that for a long time I was in such scarcity with money mm-hmm. and in such a scarce lack mindset that I wanted to be in an abundant mindset and wanted to feel and be abundant with money that I almost like fake it till you make it, right? Mm. And was like – overspending in order to feel abundant with money, Mm -hmm. right? And what I learned from that was that my abundance was actually just a mask for my scarcity. It's actually still being in a lack mindset. It's actually still scarcity. It's like, hey, universe, look, look, look. Look at me spend. I'm abundant. See, see, see. Yeah. You're going to provide more, right? But actually, I am not being abundant because I feel like I need to spend in order to be abundant as opposed to just being and feeling abundant with money. Like why can't like saving, why can't saving my money be abundant? Why can't holding on to my money be abundant? Why does it have to be spending it makes me feel abundant? Why does giving it away? Yeah. You know? And then what's the value add that like we are spending it on too? Are we even spending it on something that is healthy? It's one thing to spend it on vegetables. It's another thing to spend it on some, you know, shoes for the night. So <laughs> or just like just all the Amazon clicks and it's just like you just to swipe away and it's at your house the next day. Now I'm feeling like, triggered. did I really need this? <laughs> I'm triggered. I'm triggering myself. My husband's like, if one more Amazon <laughs> box comes, I'm like, I can't hear you. Click, click. Um, so I, I am guilty of that. But I like the way that you're framing it because it is making me kind of think um, – in this way of like how we operate and essentially like behave and treat this thing that we truly do desire and we want to have a great relationship with. And it's even harder too if you didn't come from an environment or grow up with maybe parents or family members Mm -hmm. who had the same mindset, right? Maybe they operated from a scarcity mindset. Maybe they either, you know, overspent or Mm -hmm. didn't budget correctly or, you know, didn't have enough to even spend. So you grew up with a lack thereof. And so to try to get this mindset now, like where does that work begin? If, If you're the first of your generation to think this way or even want to attempt to heal your relationship with money, where do you start? (laughs) I am the first of my family lineage to be working on this and to heal these generational curses. Yo también. (laughs) Um, And it's just a lot of mindset. I think it starts with mindset work, right? Like, okay, what are my thoughts and my narratives and my beliefs around money? What even are they, right? Like, get honest with yourself. I think honesty, like brutal honesty, like in my self-love journey, Mm -hmm. (laughs) is really important. Um, otherwise, you're just masking things that, yeah. are, that are still living there under the surface. So I started with being really honest with where I was even at. And I found a lot of lack mindset and a lot of um, just scarce narratives and beliefs around money that aren't the ultimate truth. Mm-hmm. And and I learned that asking myself, like, is this thought, is this belief the ultimate truth or is this just what I'm believing yeah. or, and have believed up until this point? And if you can pinpoint that it's not the ultimate truth, then you can decide like a new truth for yourself. Well, what do I want to believe instead? Mm. And you choose a new belief, right? Like, well, I don't want to believe that money is hard to come by. Mm. I want to believe that money is available to me and um, is making its way to me all the time. And there's an abundance of money out there and I'm a magnet for it. You know, like you create a new story, a new narrative, new beliefs, foundational beliefs around money. Um, I think that's the mindset work. And I think then it goes into like energetic work and like embodying mm-hmm. these things, right? Like, are you moving through life as if this is what you believe? Yeah. You know, and are you being the person that believes that? And are your actions in alignment with those beliefs? That part. Mm-hmm. That's the third part is the action part, yep. you know? So I think mindset then translates to energy, then translates to action. Yeah. So um, in full hearted agreeance with this, I know you treat, um, you teach this in your of course, it very much mirrors um, what I teach my clients around manifesting in relationship, right? Like your thoughts lead to emotions that then lead to behaviors that will either serve you, but it starts with the belief. Totally. And so it's the same thing when it comes to, um, since we're doing the parallel relationship, where it's like, okay, you can tell me that you believe you're the bomb.com, but then I see you dating men who do not value you. 
which then makes you feel like crap. And now you're behaving in a way that is settling versus like that higher vibrating thought, that higher vi vibrating behavior. Right. Yeah. So just like how you can see the same with money and how someone spends and how they handle mm -hmm. it, that really lets us know what's at the root of someone's belief system. Yeah. It's the same thing with relationship. So Absolutely. as you were going through the healing process of your like finance and mirroring the part with relationship, were you making sure that you were doing behaviors for your finances that also were behaviors for your relationship that were serving? <laughs> so I don't think that the two timelines were like <laughs> even, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I think that maybe I was realizing that there was similarities and I was like, well, I'm not ready to tap into the relationship mm. one just yet. Let me work on the money one. Um, but when you asked me just now if I was dating, I was like proudly, I was, I proudly said yes because yeah. I haven't been for a long time because I think I've had so much more to heal there mm -hmm. in that area. Um, and so, like my self-love journey started at the beginning of the pandemic and I, it's been three years now. And just now I'm actually feeling ready and open and available to date. And so the timelines did not sync up and line mm -hmm. up, but, but we're there now. We're there now. So, Okay, if we are making the parallel between or the even relation between the way that we handle money and the way that we handle finance, what would you say to a woman or man who has like a plethora of money but no relationship or no love? Mm -hmm. Would you still make that same like analysis that they have the same relationship with it because they're successful in one area but not in another? Well, I think that just because somebody has a lot of money doesn't mean that they necessarily have a healthy relationship mm. with money, you know? Um, they could be, they could have a lot of fears around money as well. Mm. I actually know millionaires that are afraid that their money is going to run out, Yeah, you know? Um, and so I do think that there are parallels. And like, again, like I said, just because money and relationships like correlate and go hand in hand doesn't necessarily mean that like you're going to be broke and single or <laughs> rich and in a love in a relationship you know what I'm saying yeah um I just think that they they go hand in hand but maybe and maybe one just has like more work than another or shows up in a different way mm -hmm. I think they there's also this additional factor of um reward system right mm -hmm. I think with finances um we feel like and this is actually like it's this is not just a thing this is also a fact mm -hmm. um society believes based on studies that have shown that it is easier to make money than it is to create love mm -hmm. so we will based on the reward system invest in the thing that we think we have more control over mm -hmm. the thing that we think that will give us instant gratification or um, we will pour into the thing that we think, okay, I'm going to get a return on this investment with relationship. I can't necessarily control the other person or who comes into my life. So because I have control of maybe, you know, how many hours I clock a day, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my energy here. Mm -hmm. Cause at least here I will be able to maybe live a lifestyle that I want, you know, I may be single, but at least I'll be single in Paris or, mm -hmm. you know, at least if I'm crying or crying in my, you know, Rolls Royce. So, you know, we will put our energy and time into the thing that we think at least we will get a return on this. Well, exactly what you said. We think mm -hmm. we, like that's a belief that's, that you have mm -hmm. is that money is going to provide me an ROI yeah. relationship harder to find one that will provide, you know, give me something back in return. And I think that's a belief as well. Right. Yeah. And something that maybe you can look at and say, oh, shit. Like I'm realizing that my beliefs around relationships is that it's it's harder to um, be attain. rewarded mm -hmm. or attain or receive some kind of reciprocation or security, mm -hmm. you know, in this in this area of my life. And I don't necessarily feel that in this area of my life. Um, but it's I think that's all your beliefs. I would say, like, also too to this point at the root, um, since we're talking uh, the parallel and comparison, right? Um, you know how I said about energy and time, if we look at actions, right, we clock maybe eight hours a day if you have a nine to five. And then if you're an entrepreneur, like 14 <laughs> to 16 I don't know, hours a day, if you're working for yourself, um, putting into work, right, putting into like, let me get this money. If you look at the behaviors of what we're clocking in, 
to our dating and our love life and relationship, self-care, self-work, um, growth, uh, maybe even coaching, right? And classes that we're taking. We're not clocking in as many hours into us getting a relationship or even manifesting the relationship that we want as we are into our career. And so that would mm -hmm. be a behavioral shift right there that will probably make there be more of an even balance if we put the amount of man hours into our relationships. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to do it. We don't want to do the work. We just want somebody <laughs> to just come love us exactly as we are. And like, so we got work to do sometimes. <laughs> Correct. I will ask um, in my consultations when clients schedule appointments um, or potential clients, I'll ask them like, well, what have you done so far for self? And before coming to me, like what work have you invested? And they're like, well, you know, I make sure I treat myself to a spa every week. Um, and, you know, I just, um, you know, got into therapy. Like they'll start to like try to like list some of the things. But I'm like, and how long have you been doing that? And they're like, well, you know, I just started. So, you know, now I'm finally taking care of myself this year. And I'm like, OK, so this is the year 2023. You just started clocking in hours to the care that you need, even coming into me to the spicy life. But when it comes to your career, you have invested been doing 40 it. years of like all, you know, this time and energy. You've been going to school since you were like, what, preschool is starting at three. <laughs> so like <laughs> you've got lots of years of experience in this other area of like maybe even achievement or learning or being able to take direction and leadership or even, you know, how to apply skills or just stay focused on something. But when it comes to romantic relationship, we haven't put in that same energy, which is why the coaching part, I always say, is so, so, so important because it isn't just a one stop shop. I'm going to take a class one time and now I'm done. It is a continuous growing in that area mm -hmm. every year, every week, every month. I agree. One thousand percent. I am. I love hiring coaches for all areas of my life. Trainer, therapist, healer life coach all the things um somebody who has put in that time and that work yeah for longer than I have that knows more than I do that can help me and guide me in something where I'm just starting off mm -hmm. how important do you think um the same way that you like okay well I'll invest in coaching how important is it now that you have done like your healing journey around uh finance how important do you think it is that you are with someone like-minded as yourself? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we will fall in love with someone who isn't necessarily like equally yoked with us in that area. It's so important. It's like, I need- On a scale of one to 10, what would you say? Like a 10, okay. like a nine. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say nine. <laughs> She's ranking it very, very high, guys. I'm, I'm gonna say nine. I'm gonna say nine because also like, like there's room for for growth, you yeah. know what I mean? But I need you to be, I just need you to like be into it. I need you to have done self work. I need you to want to do more mm -hmm. self work. I need you to be conscious and aware and take accountability for yourself and mm -hmm. your actions and your trauma and your life experiences. And like, let's make each, each other better. In, yeah. You know? I don't think that, me and my husband would have as good of a relationship if I didn't take the accountability piece, mm -hmm. right? So like mm -hmm. he um, is in finance for a living. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> like comes from um, a different background than me, right? When it just comes to like his parents and his parents' parents and like what they had, um, their level of even education around mm -hmm. uh, finance. And um, he let's just say my lineage is closer to slavery than his okay mm. so uh, as far as like him being an immigrant coming from jamaica um and my grandfather being um uh, a, a sharecropper so like it's way closer on mm. my side of like us just overcoming yeah. so i did grow up um with you know some with the scarcity mindset mm -hmm. and his is very much i don't know if i would say my husband's is an abundance mindset it is a responsible mindset. Like mm. everything is like, okay, not only what's the return, but like, how do we save for later? How do we maximize this? Um, and he is actually way more, he's very thrifty. So for him having, <laughs> coming from that and me not, it's it's funny, but I don't think if I hadn't done the work, if I hadn't taken the classes, if I didn't let him sit me down when he addressed like, hey, I'm noticing some unhealthy things going on over here and like, we can't have this in our household or mm. it will create like uh it would be more problematic right mm -hmm. so 
I would avoid the conversations. <laughs> I would avoid the conversations and be, and, and instantly um, be defensive. Yep. Uh, well, you have a different background than me. Um, you came from, you know, more than I did. And then I would also go into um, his lack of understanding and sympathy towards me. Um, Those are I would, your narratives. Yeah, I would be like, I'm the first generation to go to school. Like, I had all these, like, <laughs> and he would be like, okay, yeah, but we still got a budget. So, like, yes, those things are true, but you still need to learn right. how to save. And so, um, one, I, because I trusted him, I also made a choice that I was going to break some patterns or habits that I had created, maybe mm -hmm. things that I even learned um, or maybe hadn't learned growing up that I was going to educate myself on. So when he saw me taking um, an active role in like the class that I took, in addition to letting him sit me down and break it down, then um, reading like uh, about finance and how it like connects with marriage mm -hmm. and the role that even financial intimacy plays in mm -hmm. relationship that I now like teach clients. Yeah. He was like, oh, I can work with this. I can work with I this. I can work with this because I told you problems and you're now like addressing it. It took a second. It wasn't like, okay, he told me and all of a sudden like problem solved. It's a process, the yes. healing process and even realizing and acknowledging that the narrative that you're telling yourself is problematic and not just hurtful to you, but hurtful to your lovers, your potential children, mm -hmm. if you don't work through those things. Totally. And so, you know, I, I found myself even saying unhealthy things and my mom hit me up and she was like, you need to stop telling people that we grew up um, poor. <laughs> Okay, we were broke, we were not poor. And I was like, what was the difference? <laughs> um, and she had like an explanation where she was like, um, I think like poor was, I can't remember how she described it. Poor was it. like, you can't, you don't eat for days. Yeah, poor was like, you don't eat for Broke's days. Like, she was like, we're eating, but barely. Broke was boring. like, we're eating, but it ain't the name brand cereal that you like. And I was right. like, okay. Okay. So she was like, but also, she was like, you talking about this, you know, in such a negative mm -hmm. way is like, you know, kind of like Crimea River, what was me? Mm -hmm. She was like, you're still maybe even trapped in that story. Mm -hmm. And so when she brought it to my attention, it made me even more mindful to your point earlier about what you were saying about language. I can't tell people that they need to have a certain language when it comes to love and partnership and romantic relationship and then not apply that in my relationship with finance, in right. my relationship with money. Right. So I think, you know, you saying that um, is so important because we want to apply tools where we want to apply them. <laughs> we want to do the healing work where we want to do it. But we actually need to like do that across the board. Even when it comes to, you said you mentioned fitness earlier. You're a professional dancer. Mm -hmm. You had, you know, uh, uh, this story that you were telling yourself about you not being beautiful. Mm hmm what was the how were you lying to yourself about that that must have fallen in there with the like money lie and the relationship lie well the thing about that was that my whole life I was like in the spotlight right like being a dancer you grow up it's yeah. like hair makeup like you know you have to be beautiful you have to be sexy you have to have a good body all these things yeah. right and there's no room really for like these little insecurities. So anytime one would come up, it's just mm. like hair, makeup, you know, beauty products, you know, oh, cover it up or mask it with exactly. Something. So that's okay. I think what I had done my whole life because of dance, because of the entertainment industry that um, with my like lack of awareness in like the previous years of my life, if there was an insecurity, if I did look in the mirror and that thought of like you're ugly mm -hmm. came up. I wouldn't necessarily like allow it to come to the surface and sit with it and understand it. It would like try to come up and be like, blah, blah, blah. nope, uh, got to put my clippings in, mm. got to curl my hair, got to put a lash on, got to put a lip on. Now I'm beautiful instead of getting to the root of what it was I was actually feeling, you know. So previous to pandemic, I think being a dancer, being on the road, always being on shows, if I felt insecure, I'm like, well, I'll have a lash on tomorrow. Yeah. So I'll feel beautiful again. We're fine. And if there was a long moment of time where I looked in the mirror, I just wouldn't look in, the, you know, like, oh, I'm feeling insecure. Well, get out of the mirror then. Get out of the mirror or go put your hair and your makeup on. Pandemic, what did I need to put hair and makeup on for? Mm. You can't avoid a mirror. You're just sitting there every day in yeah. your house. Mirror, window, people just, it, it's just there. It's just all there. Here's, okay, so what stuck out was, you said if you weren't feeling beautiful, you just would like put a lash on or hair extensions, right? Mm -hmm. So 
some may think to themselves, okay, well, she did the behavior to correct for this negative thought that she had. Mm -hmm. And while that was a behavior, you skipped a part about the, or you didn't skip it. I'm saying like you, for those listening, the belief was not there though. So while you did give yourself a temporary emotional fix of like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I feel better in this moment because I look better. Relief. It was temporary, yeah. So while you're doing these like temporary things, right? It's like a, a, med a medicating, but that's not really dealing the healing and strengthening the muscle or, you know, fixing or really allowing for the wound to heal because you weren't addressing what you truly believed and why belief. you believed yeah. that belief. Totally. And I, and I have my clients do this often because sometimes we don't even know what those beliefs are yeah. again, because I was just always masking it. Yep. That was my go-to. Um, and I always ask my clients, I'm like, go home grab your journal and I want you to write 10 uncomfortable truths mm -hmm. about yourself. What is an uncomfortable truth? Something you don't really want to admit or say out loud or you've never acknowledged, but is sitting somewhere within you. Yeah. Go write it down. And then there's your belief. That is what you feel about mm -hmm. yourself. And that we can work with. But masking affirmations and makeup and yep. things and self-care and spas and massages on top of an uncomfortable truth yeah. does nothing for you. For sure. Oh, my gosh. I'm so in agreement with that. Um, and of course, like as coaches, we have probably a lot of exercises and like tools in our toolbox, right? And I think that the acknowledgement of what your actual like beliefs are is a, a super important and critical one because if we don't address what's the actual low vibrational belief, mm -hmm. how can we start to even chip away at the higher vibrating belief? And I think when it comes to... Um, and I think I just like posted about this as well. We will tell ourselves we want love and we want relationships and we want like dating to be successful and, you know, have all these amazing experiences and have our, you know, pick of the letter with men. But then we will blame it on our city that there's no good men out here. I um, do that. I'm guilty. All the men in LA are trash. And I'm like, <laughs> very guilty of that one. We can't say that <laughs> thing. And yet you want to manifest this thing. And then because if you say, I believe the men in LA are trash. Not only is that making you feel an emotion of um, uh, maybe hopelessness or despair, now you're behaving as if there's no good men and let you cross paths or, you know, even you're put in an environment. That yeah, you're reality. manifesting that outcome. You're manifesting that reality for yourself. And guess what? Men who are trash will prey on that as well. That is all that you will get because men who don't have, an, you know, I. I, I say trash loosely, you guys. I apologize. <laughs> but what I really mean is not a good person, okay? There are a lot of people in this world who um, are good people but just not ready for a relationship. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about not a good person, I'm talking about someone not having uh, a higher power than themselves and therefore they don't answer to um, uh, or hold themselves accountable to anything greater than what they say. And... Therefore, they don't give themselves even, you know, permission to love because they haven't done the the healing work or they aren't even aware that they have challenges that make them um, not just unavailable, but harmful mm. to other people. So when we talk about men like that who may be predators or take advantage or um, run through people and not really love the female species, you may have had those encounters or those experiences, but believing that all men are like that doesn't serve the goal of you finding someone who's not. Right. And believing that all men are like that makes you an energetic match. Correct. For those men to show they up prey in your on life. It. Back to that. Yes, they will prey on that. They will not only be an energetic match for you, but they will prey on that they would feel it and be like okay she doesn't high, have high self-esteem it's easier to take advantage of her subconsciously because they, they're not aware that they're doing that but correct yes. some are manipulative well, enough yeah, but, yeah, but yes true. there's a lot that there's a lot that are not um but in that sense and and this is not just meant to women are yeah. guilty of this as well but in that sense of them not um only doing the ooh her she can be my victim mm -hmm. it's also Sometimes, hey, we operate from even the same low value system of ourselves. And so because 
no one would want me or I'm never going to be lovable and you're never going to be lovable. We should be together and try to love each other in the unhealthiest way possible. If I think back to like my dating history, that, that's trash. <laughs> 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 and I look back at all the toxic relationships that I've been in in my life. I was an energetic match for them mm. because of my lack of self-love. Yeah. So it's not that I was necessarily an energetic match because I was behaving the way they were. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like, the same it's not it doesn't always sync up like I'm they're doing this so that means I must be doing yeah. this it was my lack of self-love was attracting men who preyed didn't, upon that yeah, didn't love properly. and and it feeds something in their lack of their own self-love you know what I mean for them to be able to like do do that to you or take that from you so I had I had to take accountability on where am I what in me is an energetic match for these toxic relationships like mm -hmm. I can't just blame them there's a part of me that is attracting them and when I took accountability for that is when things definitely started to shift for me well the other element is too some of these fellas will even know if she ever figures out how incredible she is she won't want me mm -hmm. <gasps> so <sighs> I need to make sure that I am with her and keep her self-esteem low keep her feeling bad about herself and reminding so her stay. hey we are a reflection of each other i'm not shit and you ain't shit we gotta stay on we this same vibration <laughs> so because should you have an awakening or enlightening moment and you start to do the work right while you're in that relationship you will start to not be a match for that person anymore and they will start to lose you it's oftentimes why when we have these exes and we get them maybe we give ourselves space away from them and we get this mm -hmm. this next level clarity when we run back into them or when we, you know, see them again, it's kind of like, wait, I can't believe I ever gave you the time of day. It's once we've done the work. Like, yeah, the it's cringe. like you're able to reflect and be like, oh, my God, I see with so much clarity now. What was I thinking? That was a previous version of myself who I don't even recognize anymore. But sometimes you have to even give it that space to, like, do the work like you did. You took a, a breaky break after a big old breaky um, break. Miami guy. <laughs> A long break. A long break. <laughs> break. Um, and then how did you get back in? So like what was after you've been in a situation where you um, are hurt, disappointed with self and you start to do the healing work? How did you feel like, OK, you know, what? I'm ready to get back out there. How did you know? Well, so it was like a lot of dating myself, essentially. Right. In, in that amount of time. And like I said, it's been three years since then. And I'm just now finally starting to date again. Um, I think within those three years, there have been moments where I've been like, OK, I'm ready. Like. I want, I'm ready for like the man of my dreams, right? I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But then I, my actions weren't necessarily lining up with that. I was on dating apps like, ugh, 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 no, 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 no. I wasn't going on any dates. Mm -hmm. I wasn't putting myself out there. My friend described it to me as like, she's like, you say you want this relationship, but your welcome mat is not outside your door. Mm. You have a sign that says, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Like, how... Are, you're not you're not you're not ready and I was like mm, you're right I'm not ready because and I still had these limiting beliefs in me that were like well like I do I want it I want this magical unicorn but he's a unicorn like does mm -hmm. he even exist you know mm -hmm. and it wasn't until very recently I just it just I just felt ready I'm like oh I'm, I'm ready to put these last little bits of limiting beliefs aside like I need to stop saying that this unicorn is going to be hard to find. Mm -hmm. I need to stop saying that all men in LA are trash. I need to stop. I need to put my welcome mat out and say I am available and open yeah. for a divine masculine to come. Yes. To treat me like a queen and a goddess. Like I am ready, you know? And so it wasn't like any, necessarily any specific thing that happened. I just, I intuitively was like, I've done the healing. I'm going to heal forever. But I've done enough of the healing on my own. I'm ready to heal like in partnership now i'm ready to like find well, my, now it's my time partner for the testing of exactly. the healing so like i've been studying for the test yeah so in the dating process and in relationship is when you actually get to see like how healed you are <laughs> and i and i'm i'm seeing it now it's crazy like i'm like am i heartless am i heartless because i just am not available for the bullshit anymore like mm. at all and i'm you know, dating and being open and in that comes like this person is not for me and I have to turn them down mm -hmm. or, you know, do like to have that uncomfortable conversation. And these men like I'm like, you've never been turned on, down before mm -hmm. because the way you're acting in me just saying like this is this isn't for me mm -hmm. is wild. And then in, in return, I'm like, 
you are that bitch. Like the fact that you are not just settling for some shit that you've settled for before and you're like, no, thank you. This is not for me. I'm like, wow. I think that's, I love it here. Part of the hardest part for people. The, hey, I know that you don't want what we want or we are not in alignment and I have to release you is the hardest part for people to do. The walking away. So hard. Because it, because we think that the entering and like actually like the connection and getting with someone is hard because we have to be vulnerable and open, mm -hmm. but it's the releasing someone in the fear that they can't be replaced mm -hmm. that will keep us there way longer than we should be. Which is scarcity mindset mm -hmm. as well. Like, I think that's why we hold on to relationships for so long. We're like, well, this part is good and this part is good and this part is really good, but these parts are not good and not in alignment with what I want. But Will I ever be able to find these things again? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. So I guess this doesn't look that bad. And then you're literally telling the universe, I'm available for this. Mm. I'm available for this. And I've had to tell myself that lately in dating, I'm like, this man does have these great qualities, yeah. but he also has these things that I'm, I don't, I don't want. Yeah. And I have entertained keeping them around longer. And then I said, nope, because I'm telling the universe that I'm available for these qualities that yeah. I don't want and I'm like all right universe I'm gonna release them but like just know I do like these things okay <laughs> these qualities I do like <laughs> so show me another way <laughs> well if you will negotiate your deal breakers they're not really deal breakers for you this is something that I tell my clients all the time and I hold them accountable to that right so like they will come in with like us doing the work of like let's do our deal, deal breakers are non-negotiables and then someone will come along that they start dating and they're like oh but I really like them and I'm like but they broke like three of the deal breakers yeah. and they're like I know but he has these <laughs> other qualities and I'm like no 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 if we settle for these deal breakers, that means that one, it's not really a deal breaker <laughs> because the deal is not broken. You are still staying. You're in and the deal. And then two, we are saying that we will accept this and the universe will continue to give us that thing because this is who you are signing up for. He's showing you this before even the committed relationship. Mm -hmm. He's going to wow the hell out once he has you, you loaded and locked in. Mm -mm -mm. So you have to get out now while you still have your beauty still have your strength still have you know your your peace of mind you haven't lost it all yet because also the other thing will be time once you've invested so much time in someone you will stay with them even if the relationship's unhealthy yep. because of the amount of months or years that you've put in i have people want to stay with people and it's only been a few weeks and they're like but what if i never find someone again i'm like it's been three weeks <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> Let them go. Yeah, but the they, scarcity mindset will keep you there a lot longer than you should be. Yeah, and I'm just chopping people left and right these days. Hey, <laughs> you karate kid and people over here. But that's how you will get him sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By yeah. releasing those who don't. So what's your measure? What's your non-negotiables? What's your deal breakers? If they do these five things to me, it's a no for me. I'm just going to like, I'm just rummaging through what I've experienced lately. Um men who are not into personal development and into you know like spirituality and manifestation and affirming what it is they desire like if they're not into that it's a deal so if he's not spiritual me. if he's not into self-growth it doesn't even need to be so much spiritual i could bring the spirituality to our relationship <laughs> don't worry i got enough of that for You're us like i could save him you gonna be spiritual <laughs> you gonna be spiritual by the in a year don't worry I, but i need you to be into personal development and like work on yourself and want more for yourself and want to manifest and create mm -hmm. know that you're a, a creator mm -hmm. like know your divinity and that you can create your reality like I need him to be into that so create so to be creative is feminine energy mm -hmm. is that why you're saying you want that from him because you want to feel more creativity from men you want to build something with them no I just I just don't like the mindset of like it is what it is like these are the cards I was dealt I need you to know that you can uh, create your piece. reality okay you know so like you want you somebody have the who power. can pick themselves back up and um change the outcome of something like this is what I see for my future and I will create that okay so then that direction and term determination would be masculine energy yes yeah I think it's a little bit of both yeah right like uh-huh 
the masculine energy is the taking the action towards yeah. that. And the feminine energy is the like knowing that you are powerful and can have anything that you desire. The intuition, it's the vision, it's the knowing um, that, dream. That, yeah. Knowing that your heart's desires are were placed there for you, yeah. for you to manifest. So like knowing that and then taking the masculine action to actually create it and do actually it. Actually create yep. it, yes. I see what you're saying. Okay. So, so we personal development. Um, so they need to be personal person they need to be into personal development. What else? Communication is so big for me. Like defensiveness, no. Arguing, like like yelling, like so argumentative. No, uh, he can't be lazy. He has to be into personal development. And then what's the next one? Um, fitness. I need him to. He can't be lazy. <laughs> I need him to care about his body, not in like an an ego way, but like. You get one vessel in yeah. this lifetime. Health is wealth. Oh my gosh. If so you don't much. take care of yeah. the one vessel that you've been giving in this lifetime, we don't have a, a long future together. Yeah. So health, fitness is important okay. to me. So we got three things. Uh, so if he's if he doesn't work out, if he's not into health, then it's a no for you. And then what else? What does he not have permission to do? He cannot do these two things to me. Um cheat on me okay so cheating mm -hmm. that's four it's a big no no um does lie go with cheating or is that its own thing it's its own thing lying okay so I, dishonesty i would rather you be brutally honest with yep. me and hurt my feelings yep. than lie to me because lying makes me feel like we're not on the same yep. team we're, we're like makes me feel distant from you yeah no lies Okay, so that means that trust is crucial to you. You trust. gotta have that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with those five non negotiables, then I'm gonna hold you accountable <laughs> to making sure that we don't talk to nobody who starts to demonstrate red flags no. leaning into those things. No, I'm chopping red flags left and right. Okay, are we doing enough time as we start to see things? Does it have to be blatant in your face, or are there yellow flags where it's like, hey, I'm noticing these things and I want to ask you more questions about it. Are we taking that time? Yeah. So I think that something that I'm really proud of myself for is old me is either like all the way in or all the way out. I'm like, yes, mm. I'm obsessed with you. Be the one. Marry me. <laughs> well, let's do this after day one. Or like, absolutely not. Don't look at me. Don't come my way. Don't talk to me. Don't touch mm. me. You're done. Right. Like I had no like, let me give someone a chance. I didn't mm. have any of that. It was like, yes or no, in or out good or bad so new me is more open right like I went on a first date with someone recently and it was good we had so much fun there were some things that were question marks for me and old me would have been like no because mm. he didn't he wasn't perfect right mm. and I went on a second date with him and good I'm like girl. let's see you know so yeah we're asking questions we're we're giving them time and also like I like um, I use these dates and this experience to practice being who I've become, you know? Like you said, I've been studying for the test for three years mm -hmm. now, and now I get to take the test. And, like, I like taking the test. Yeah. I like knowing, like, okay, I, I passed. I got an A+. Plus. Like, I'm good here, you know? Or, like, oh, that was a little hard for me. Like, that question was hard. Almost failed, but I didn't. <laughs> you know? And I, I leave feeling, like, really empowered and really, like, really powerful and really just, like, proud of myself that that's so good How i am you meeting these guys dating apps yay and okay see you guys so you're still over here like choosing you're still like yeah pretty much doing similar to what you did before you were you're, you know you slid through someone's DM. you're still being an active uh proponent in the life that you want to create yourself yeah. for yourself now i am <laughs> <laughs> now i am now um and also like the universe is just kind of dropping people in my lap too. Mm. Like somebody who I knew yeah. from like years ago randomly texts me. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Thank you. You know? Yep. So I think just being open, like my energetic welcome mat is out yes. and, and they're showing up at my door. The shift makes a difference. And like, I just did a post on how to meet um, high value men. And one of the things that I said was reaching back out even sometimes to guys who you threw away when you were unhealed. Mm. Not necessarily going back to an ex, right? I don't want people going back to exes that did them shady. No. What I'm talking about is those nice guys who you were like, mm, this person could have potential, but I didn't feel the passion. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this other toxic guy over here who doesn't want me gives it to me. So I'm going to go with this other guy who makes my fire and flame burn. Totally. 
when we are unhealed, we actually will release a lot of people who maybe could love us the way that we need, but we didn't recognize it at the time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm like is like, okay, I don't believe in going back to exes that mistreated you. However, those nice guys, those, you know, sweet mm -hmm. ones who like you don't have a tainted history with, mm -hmm. we can circle back to those. Yeah. And also, again, that brings me to like practicing being who I say I am and who I've worked towards being is like, let me date this person again, this version of myself. With like, a new let's lens. See, yeah. Let's see what that's like. Let's see who I get to be in, in, in these situations and scenarios now, you know? Beautiful. I love this. So mm -hmm. the conversation with old self, how, what, how did that conversation look where you had to say goodbye, see you later? Um, I actually had this realization when I got ghosted by the guy. Mm -hmm. I was like, that is so rude. Like, why would anyone ever ghost you? Mm -hmm. It feels so terrible, you know? And I had a life coach at the time and was talking to her about this. And she said, well, how do you end relationships? And I was like, oh, my God, I'm a ghoster. I'm a ghoster. You're a ghoster? I was. You don't tell people that it's over and you I kind of just them? like, he, 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 LOL. And like, <laughs> <laughs> old me, you know? Like, if there was like guys in my DMs talking to me and they'd be like, you're so beautiful. Like, when are you free? I'd be like, hee, hee, hee. Um, I don't know. I'll let you know. Like, just, you know, like, mm -hmm. very dismissive. And I'm like, no wonder I have attracted this. You and this showed me that I'm dismissive as well. And <clears throat> that was a hard pill to swallow. Um, oh, no, no, no. Those reality checks will have us actually calling people <laughs> apologizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have been guilty of that where, you know, people have hurt me. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is what it feels like. I can't believe. And I've called old boos up or guys that I really didn't um, take their feelings into account. I was kind of heartless mm -hmm. with them when I maybe experienced them and like hit them up like, dude, I am so freaking sorry. <laughs> I did that. I learned my lesson. Lord, why Jesus have yeah. you done this to me? <laughs> so after I got ghosted, I went into my DMs mm -hmm. to someone who I left on red and I said, hey, I'm coming back to this because I just wanted to like respectfully let you know that I was not interested and I didn't mean to ghost you. Mm -hmm. I just get uncomfortable with turning people down. But you deserve a, like a response from me. And I went back and I said that to this person. Oh, wow. He was like, wow. He's like, thank you so much. He's like, I struggle with the same thing. So I understand. But it feels really good hearing that from you. And I was like, look at me go. Look yeah, at me go. Look at me. This is karmically great. <laughs> I'm like, come on, karma. <laughs> I love it. So what would it look like us having the conversation with our old self about money then? Like, mm. how would we circle? Should I go back to like the handbag that I bought um, years ago <laughs> that I wasted money on and be like, handbag, I'm sorry that I didn't spend the money on you appropriately. Like, what would that look like? Um, how do we create better karma for our finances? I think it, it, you don't necessarily have to go back to anything. I think it starts now, mm -hmm. right? Like in, t in the awareness and the accountability of like, what are you doing now and what can you do moving forward, <clears throat> you know? So when I had this awareness that like I was spending in order to feel abundant, mm -hmm. which was still kind of lack, you know, instead of just feeling abundant, period. Like I needed mm -hmm. something outside of me. I needed to make a purchase and spend money in order to feel abundant. Mm. When I had that realization, I started to have more awareness and I would catch myself just, I would get out the gym and I would get in the car and be like, oh, I want like a little treat. I should go get a Starbucks. And I'd be like, wait, why do you want a Starbucks? What do you, what do you need a Starbucks for? And I would feel myself feeling like going to get that Starbucks will equal me feeling abundant mm. as opposed to going home and making coffee because I can do that as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And Yes, like these are like abundant things to do, going to buy a coffee that can make you feel abundant, but not if it's like almost like a codependent action, like mm. spending this money on this coffee will I won't make feel good me feel abundant. Unless I, do I don't thing. feel abundant mm. now, but I will once I take this action. And I stopped taking those kinds of actions. Uh, they are like codependent actions. Like if I do this, then I'll feel this. You know, like if I spend here, then I'm abundant. And I started just having the conversation with myself of like, what about like not getting the Starbucks, having that $7 stay in your account, can can that feel abundant, mm. you know? And so I think it's more of like the action that you take moving forward and the awareness and the conversations that you have with yourself now. Yeah. 
dang, I had to have this conversation yesterday. <laughs> You're like, I You're bought like, the thing. I, ah. No, 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 no. So I stopped myself. Um, but look, this is why you have an accountability partner, right? My yeah. husband definitely was like, so uh, I'm going on a trip and I wanted, like, just to look fly, I, was, I wanted a designer backpack. I have a backpack. I don't need to go buy a Louis Vuitton backpack. But I was telling him, I was like, I think I want to get myself a backpack. He was like, you don't need to buy that thing. And then I had to like pause for a second. And I, you know, I paused for a second. And I was like, I don't need this thing. What am I doing it Why for? Why do I want it? Yeah. What, will what I still be able to take feel? a good photo? Will I still be able to have a good time? Will I still be able to do what I want to do with the Lululemon backpack that I have? You know, <laughs> that I think you know my fanny pack. Like yeah. I would, I would still have the same experience. I don't actually need this thing, but we want that little like spike. We want to feel like maybe sometimes that little rush. But when you start to actually think about like you said, the why and what is it serving, what is it actually fulfilling, then you will start to be operating from a place of mindfulness and hold yourself accountable to, no, I don't need that thing. I, I love myself without having this thing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just as incredible with or without this thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I think that's uh, an, an awesome like point right there. Yeah. I, I Just to piggyback off that, um, I feel like the reason why we want more money and we want to buy more things is because we think it's going to make us feel fill in mm -hmm. the blank, right? And the work is like, can I feel that whatever X, Y, Z yeah. blank now without those things? Mm. And if I cannot, that's my work is to feel whatever it is. I think that purchase is going to make me yep. feel can I feel that now without having it like without being codependent on the thing to feel mm. that way like can I just be an embodiment of that feeling yeah regardless of my circumstance regardless yeah. of outside circumstance and eventually you become the person who has enough fucking money <laughs> to buy whatever fucking thing and but you're not doing it from a place of like need the thing to make me feel blank it's like I feel blank so I get to go buy this yeah. thing yeah, and I think sometimes we can just we can work at that, right? Like it doesn't have to be an overnight thing. No, I think it can be a hey, can I create this emotion yes. without doing this thing? Oh, I can create this emotion actually in a more affordable way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. without even without spending. Yeah, sometimes, without you know? sometimes even spending. Just like it, just a mindset and a feeling and a and a an embodiment yep, of it for for sure. Okay, Jamie, you have hit on <laughs> so many good points. You are going to share with us where people can find you if they want to sign up for your life coaching, um, if they want to have you um, dance at their next uh, <laughs> uh, event that they're throwing, their next concert, let everybody know where they can find you. Okay. Um, my Instagram is mainly where I'm at, um, but my socials are at James Lee four, J A M E S L E E and the number four. Um, and my website is www.jamieleeruiz.com. And you can, Email me at, on my Instagram. You can slide in my DMs. Um, I love a good DM chat. Um, either if you like want to be a client or if you want to date me, like she's not gonna ghost in. you either. She's gonna let you know. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna ghost you. We're gonna communicate. So <laughs> I love it. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Schedule a consultation. Let me help you out. You can also sign up for your Purpose Mate awaits class. And uh, make sure that you share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.